hello there beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new on the channel you are most welcome my name is Josie I'm a Cameroonian based in the UK so guys a lot of you have shown interest in my Okongo bomb video that I made about a year ago so I decided to do an updated version in order to explain some of the things that I didn't explain well in that particular Okongo video please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more amazing Cameroonian and intercontinental recipes without further ado let's get right into the video these are all the ingredients we are going to need to prepare our okongobong or ugu leaves i'm going to start with the main ingredients guys this is our okongobong or ugu leaves already sliced i'm going to insert a clip of how i rinse my vegetable before slicing it before slicing my vegetables i usually rinse it up like this just to shake off any sun or dust particles that could be hanging on the leaves because when i'm done slicing it can be really hard to rinse it up in a way that all the particles can come out so i prefer to rinse it up like this with so much water this is just the vegetables and water and i make sure that the water goes above the vegetables like this and then i just shake it off and i drain the water before i slice my vegetables they have been washed and drained i have four bundles of that in there each bundle has 13 strands i'll just let the water drain and i'll go ahead and slice it in this other bowl i have my fresh beef here i have some ground crayfish and on this plate i have ground egusi this is 600 grams of ground egusi in this bowl i have limestone or kangwa if you're from cameroon or kangu if you are from nigeria some people call it paddle salt as well actually dissolved and drained this to avoid adding particles into my okongobo and here i have three onions five maggi i might add or reduce depending on the taste as we cook and here i have my ground ginger ground white pepper garlic granule or garlic powder and ground black pepper and this is my pure vegetable oil and here i have my table salt if i forgot anything i will definitely show you in the course of the cooking before i forget guys i bought this fresh okongobong and the ground egusi from the african store just in case you're wondering where i bought that from in this pot i have water the water is already on heat it has to be way more than the vegetable and I'm just going to add my dissolved limestone into this water and let it boil. While the water for the okongo bomb is boiling, I'm going to season and boil the meat. Right now, I'm just sprinkling some salt into the meat, ground white pepper. You can use your preferred seasoning for your meat, guys. I'm just using what I normally use. To boil my meat with and right now i'm going to add some ground ginger and some garlic powder or garlic granule some black pepper two maggi cubes and i'll also add some chopped onion now i'll just go in with some water not too much just a glass of water and i'll set my heat on and i'll cover my pot and let that cook until it's ready on the other side my limestone water is already boiling guys now i'm going to turn off the heat before adding my okongo bong to the limestone water it's important to do this because if you add your okongo bong into the boiling water when you've not turned it off your okongo bong is going to turn out very soft you don't want that to happen so I've turned off the heat. I'm just going to quickly pop in my okonobong into the water. I'm going to tell you why you need to add limestone into your water before washing your okonobong with it. When you do that, it keeps that greenness. You don't want to lose the green color when your okonobong is finally ready. You just have to give it a gentle stir for about one to two minutes 
and you go ahead and drain it and squeeze so you see at this stage the okonobong is not soft at all if you make it soft at this stage you are going to end up with very mushy okonobong at the end and we don't want that so in here i have my colander i'll just go ahead and pour my okonobong inside and add some cold water to it just to make sure it cools up before we squeeze you don't want to burn your hands while doing this when you're convinced that it's cold enough you can go ahead and squeeze it so you don't need to scrub your vegetables all you need to do is to make sure you rinse it as much as possible in order to get rid of any sandy particles or dust or any dirt that could be on your vegetable don't scrub it but once you're convinced that you've rinsed it enough just squeeze it and put on a plate so this is all I'm doing, squeezing. This is what our okongobong looks like. Very small, right? When you put it in hot water, it just shrinks. This is all we have. I want to try and make some of the egusi to be lumpy. So on this tray, I've added water to the rest of the egusi and this is the texture it has and in this other bowl i made the egusi a bit thicker because i want to try and create a little bit of lungs in the egusi so i hope it works back in cameroon i know that there's some particular type of egusi that does not really form these lumps i don't know if this one is a type that gives lumps but i just want to give it a try and see what happens when you want to form those lumps you mix your egusi with a little bit of warm water i actually think this is a bit too soft compared to what my mom told me but i'll still give it a try and see if it works the pot is already on heat and it's on medium heat so I'll just add a little bit of oil not too much just enough to cover the bottom of the pot and i'll go ahead and scoop the egusi and add in the oil just like this i'm done adding the scoops guys i'll just try and flip it to the other side i don't think i did this the way I was supposed to do it so I'll just go ahead and add the remaining egusi to the pot add some water to the pot the lumps did not come out exactly the way I wanted but I'm glad I can still see some lumps in there as you can see I've added water to the pot I'm going to cover up the pot right now and let it cook on medium heat for at least 30 minutes within those 30 minutes I'm going to open the pot and check just to be sure that it's it's actually not burning because a goosey burns very easily and if this gets burnt it's going to be another whole trouble we don't want to perceive that burnt scent in our Okongo bomb our egusi has been cooking for 15 minutes now and everything is looking nice and in order I'll just cover it up again and let it cook for 15 more minutes after 15 minutes it should be ready guys it's been 30 minutes and i think our egusi is ready now look at that it's completely ready so i'll just go ahead and add the remaining onions to the egusi and i'll add the remaining maggi ginger a little more white pepper add some garlic to it and some black pepper as well and sprinkle some salt I'll also go in with my oil at this point guys the quantity of oil you add to your food is totally up to you and I'll give it a nice stir make sure everything simmers see those lumps were not a complete fail i still ended up with some lumps look at that i'm so happy it formed guys look at that at this point i'm adding my already cooked meat 
you might want to leave the meat stock for now because we don't want the okamobon to end up being so watery so i'm just taking out the meat from the stock and adding to our okamobon looking good and add the crayfish at this point and there at this point everything has gone inside guys the only thing that is remaining is the okongobong leaves so it's time to add the okongobong now i'll just go ahead and add that and give it a stir and make sure that everything is evenly distributed i've stirred that up guys as you can see everything is looking a bit too dry so i'll go in with the meat stock not too much because you don't want your okongobong to end up being so watery and you don't also want to overcook it and just stir that up at this stage you might want to go ahead and taste to make sure that everything is perfect yeah the salt the maggi all the spices everything is perfect at this stage i'll just cover this up and let it cook for maximum five minutes and that will be it the aroma from this fresh okongobong is mouth watering i'm going to be enjoying this with some boiled sweet plantains what do you like to enjoy your okongobong with i know some people enjoy it with boiled sweet plantains fried plantains called dodo as well some people like to enjoy it with um, boiled white yams. Some people like to enjoy it with sweet yams. There are so many things that you can enjoy your okongobong with. If you enjoyed watching the recipe, guys, give it a thumbs up. Share it with someone. Ask all your questions in the comment section. Let me know what you think about the recipe in the comment section as well. Subscribe to my channel if you've not yet subscribed to the channel. And hopefully, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye.